And now joining me here for a Missouri Valley Conference chat, Todd Licklider, the head coach of the Evansville Purple Aces, uh, fresh off an overtime win over Southeast Missouri State, two and three on the season. Uh, it has been a disjointed season for you guys and for everybody. Uh, how would you assess sort of where you guys are at here in mid-December? Well, it's hard to compare. You know, we've done, we've not done a lot um, that's, that's the same that I've done in the past. I've been at this a lot of years. I said, if I was going to go through a virus like this and a shortened season, I guess I'm glad I'm doing it after 40 years of experience than four, you know, so hopefully I've, I can draw upon some of the um, lessons I've learned, but it's always unique. And uh, I like our team and the way they've approached um, what we've asked them to do. And um, I think they, they keep playing better. All we were trying to do is use our time wisely and, and be the best we can be come conference season. Well, and obviously that's going to come here pretty quickly. Um, uh, you know, I, I love your point about experience because I think it matters at the head coaching staff level as much as it does on the team, uh, whether it's in a conference like the Valley or across the country. I really do believe that teams that have experience are going to navigate this better just because of life experiences. How have you found that with your staff and your players dealing with the hurdles that everyone's having to deal with this season? Well, I've enjoyed it. I've got a, a really good staff, I think. Um, there's a good balance. Uh, I, I share this, Andy. I, when I was a butler, I thought I had the best staff in America. And I would say it, and people didn't realize, but, you know, I had Laval Jordan, Brad Stevens. And uh, and I would tell them, look, you know, I've, I've got more experience, but uh, I'm always open to your suggestions. You understand where we're at, uh, closer to the situation. And so it was a really good balance. I've got the same thing here, too. Two of my former players are on staff in Brandon Cronin and Thomas Jackson. And then uh, Logan Ballman, who, was, who has been here and uh, worked under Rick Pitino at Louisville. Uh, so they're, they're just terrific. And um, what we've tried to do is um, we, we realize what a burden this is for everybody. It's just stressful. So we've said, let's just teach, be upbeat, be thankful, and do the best we can and not add any burden to anybody. Let's, because when you're developing a team and starting um, the way we have, you know, we, we got a head start last year, but we're still in that process of, you know, implementing a system and an environment and all that's stressful. But if we can eliminate some of that and just, like I say, be thankful for the time we have and um, for, for the opportunities we have, then I think that we can kind of, we, we won't, uh, we can navigate it better. So, so as a father of a college student, I, I know that this is incredibly difficult for all college students, regardless whether they're an athlete or not. Uh, but one thing that I've found in talking to, you know, these players and student athletes across the country is how being allowed to practice and play games uh, has been their, their mental health release, if you will, because other than that, they're in their rooms uh, or eating and, you know, not much else is going on, but that's true for all college students. And a lot of college students don't have that outlet. How have you found with your players just being able to be on the court and playing in some of these games and, and actually having some moments where they're maskless? You know, that's actually a big deal. Um, and how that's, you know, sort of helped them release some of that stress that you're talking about. I think it's probably really important. They've been able to, um, you know, just put forth effort and to see, see the uh, fruits of their efforts, you know, to, to evaluate. And, um, and like you said, not have a mask on for a little while. Um, but most of the things like practice, we mask, we have protocol, obviously. Um, we've, we've got things that we're doing. So they're always aware of it. But I, I do think that during contests, you probably get to escape that a little bit, even though when you go into an arena and there's, you know, 500 people, maybe uh, it's a reminder, of course. But, uh, but, you know, again, I think there's a lot to be thankful for. And so we want to focus on that. We, you know, as I tell our guys, um, I, I don't think it's going to last forever. We've got some very intelligent uh, people working on vaccines and therapies. And so let's, uh, let's follow all the guidelines and protocols, stay as healthy as we can possibly be, create a safe environment, knowing that uh, not too far from now, I think that there'll be uh, some immunity and some vaccines. So hopefully, you know, we, we've got 
uh, got that to look forward to. So Todd, just want to end with, with the season at hand uh, as we get into the Valley. Um, obviously, A.J. Green, it's disheartening for him and for yeah. Northern Iowa. So player of the year is out. Uh, you know, they're taking a pause as they sort of reset here in mid-December. Um, but with no real home court advantages across the league, I mean, yes, there will be travel and that will be a factor, but no real home court advantages. Um, what's your anticipation of what the league race could look like and where Evansville fits in? Well, you know, we, we have hope. Uh, there's no question. That's why you play the game. I tell everybody if the, if the uh, favorite always won, be no reason to play the game. Uh, you know, there's always that. I've been a part of teams that were able to, um, you know, overcome adversity or to, uh, you know, have, have a success against teams that were favored. So we're not the favorite, obviously. We're actually picked last, but we know you play the games for a reason. Our guys continue to improve and grow. And there's going to be a real uniqueness to the way we're playing these games, as you were saying, Andy. You're going to uh, travel, play back-to-backs. Um, the team that can make the most um, – the, the adjustments, I guess minor adjustments, might have a real advantage on the second night. Um, I, I kind of like it. Uh, I've always thought that uh, because of the way we play and the system we have, I've thought we've been good on – uh, in the past on uh, quick turnarounds. And that's going to be even quicker than tournaments, obviously. You get a day in between the NCAA. So uh, it'll, it'll, there'll be some uniqueness to it, but um, we'll, we'll just see uh, how it goes. In the Valley, one of the things is there's really no nights off. Uh, Well-coached teams, good teams. And, uh, you know, it was quite an experience. Um, I, I've always appreciated the Valley from afar, but in the last couple of years being a part of it, I, I see the, the quality of play and the quality of coaching. So uh, we're, we're just going to try to do our part. And, and is there one player that here early uh, that you feel, you know, has maybe exceeded expectations that we'll be talking about a little bit more as we get deeper into the conference? Uh, on our team? Yes. You're saying. Yeah. Well, no, I've had pretty high expectations for all of them. Um, I, I like uh, Shamar Givens, our point guard. Um, he can, you know, his, his game keeps developing. He's got terrific speed, but, um, he's playing with a little, uh, more pace in, in the half court and, uh, really feel like he gives us somebody that's in charge and, and secure with the ball. And then, uh, we got Juwan Newton back and then Evan Coleman and, um, Noah Frederick, and, um, are seniors as well. So they've got the leadership. And then we added Jax Levitch and, uh, and a few others that uh, are are meshing really well. I I, I just have really enjoyed this group. Uh, they're fun to coach, so I'm thankful. Well, as I said, I think the Valley's doing it right. Back to backs, couple of um, gaps in there for potential makeups during the season. I think this will be the safest way to do it. Officials all in one place for the weekend, which I think is a huge plus as well. So uh, all things are pointing hopefully in the right direction. Todd, I appreciate it. Happy holidays and, and stay safe. Same to you, Andy. Thank you for the time.